this Lexus RX 350h really pleasantly surprised me. With my first few hours in the vehicle, I thought, seems like a nice luxury crossover. I'll probably give it some thumbs up, post a video online, and be done with it until I see the RX again next year. But after spending a little more time with this RX 350h, I realized the amount of thought and care that went into this vehicle. It doesn't have some of the super flashy features you'll find in other vehicles, but it does make innovations in small but very noticeable ways that will increase the quality of your life. And I think some of the innovations this vehicle makes will spread throughout the automotive industry and become standard within the next few years. What am I on about? We're gonna find out. I'm Jake, you're watching Gas Guzzlers. This is the Lexus RX 350h. Let's get into it. Let's talk about the exterior of the Lexus RX 350h. Let's start with the hood right here. It's a very flat, tall hood. I have found that it makes it kind of difficult to pinpoint where the front corners of the vehicle are while driving, and it makes the vehicle feel bigger than it really is. Now, this vehicle does have a great camera system to try to offset that. We'll talk about that a bit more during the driving section. Lexus has taken the spindle grille and turned it into a spindle body. They say that this makes the car more aerodynamic. They've made some other changes to the aerodynamics of the RX 350. For example, they have added flatter, uh, more flush door handles along the side. That's a trend we're seeing in the industry these days. And down below, there is more effective covering. That's gonna both help with aerodynamics and it's gonna reduce noise, vibration, and harshness, which enters the vehicle. After doing a lot of highway driving in this vehicle and driving over some sort of unpaved in the works highway roads, as well as many expansion joints, I can say that it reduces noise, vibration, in and harshness in the cabin about 10% better than a lot of its competitors. The engine can get a little bit loud, but we'll talk about that later. In general, the wind noise, the road noise, stay out. I do want to draw special attention to these triple beam premium headlights. They are $1,565, making them the most expensive option on this vehicle. And well, they're extremely bright. They light up the roadway ahead very nice, and I found the auto high beam function also works very well. At the side of the Lexus RX 350h, we can get 19 or 21 inch wheels on this luxury trim we have the 21 inch wheels with color keyed over fenders painted in the 500 iridium paint i think it looks great but i personally would go for copper crest let me know what you guys think in the comments below we reviewed a copper crest rx350 at the dc auto show i love that color i think it stands out without being too much we have our slim roof rails there to mount your skis and all your family gear in addition the wheels are about two inches further apart than they were in the prior generation RX 350, but the length of the vehicle has stayed the same. So Lexus has taken the wheels and pushed them out to the corners of the vehicle. That has implications for handling. We'll talk about that during the driving section. Now, as you can see, the car is locked. If I put my hands on these electronic door handles, it will unlock and it greets us. All right, let's talk about the cargo space of the RX 350h. Kick to open tailgate, very nice function. Uh, I found the sensor works really well on this particular vehicle, especially compared to other brands. I am really enjoying it. Now, something else I've been really enjoying, how about 30 cubic feet of cargo space back here, 46 cubic feet if you fold the seats down. And you won't be folding those seats down manually, no, no, no. For $550, we have power folding seats. Yes, power folding seats in a two row crossover. That is a rarity, but only the best for Lexus's customers. So we can drop our seat just by hitting a button and down it goes. Now there's something even cooler about these seats and that is the fact that they are a 40, 20, 40 split. You're saying, why does that matter? Okay, normal car, you have a 60, 40 split. Pretend that you have some long object and you have four adults. Okay, well, if you have a 40, 60 split, you're gonna have to drop that 40 if you have four adults, okay? And then you have to kind of awkwardly angle your long item to go all the way through the front of the car. It's not ideal because then you have two adults who have to share that squished seat. Now let's change the scenario. You have a 40-20-40 split like you do in the RX 350H. In that event, you just fold down that middle towing section, put your gear all the way through, and now you have four full-size seats. Let's talk powertrain. The RX 350H has a two and a half liter four-cylinder engine that's paired with an electric motor, 
Total system output there is gonna be around 246 horsepower, 233 pound-feet of torque. Um, now, you can get another electric motor attached to the rear axle. That is Lexus's E4 system, and that will enable all-wheel drive. Pretty cool. In terms of fuel economy, you can expect around 36 combined MPG. That's what this vehicle's rated for. I've been getting around 32 MPG, mostly with highway driving, which, you know, that's not where hybrids really excel. Hybrids do better in the city and such, but you're gonna be getting good fuel coming. With a little over 17 gallon fuel tank, you're gonna be going around over 500 miles before you are refueling this puppy. And in terms of how the power is sent to the wheels, well, a CVT transmission does the job. Now, you're probably expecting me to say, oh, I'm an auto journalist, I don't like CVTs. Nope, it's fine. It, it is plenty fine in this vehicle. I have not once noticed it doing anything funny. Um, you know, there have been CVTs in these hybrids forever and Lexus has figured it out. This is not like those weird CVTs that everyone complains about online. This is good. Let's say 246 horsepower isn't quite enough for you. You're a real speed demon and I see out there, Lexus has you covered. There is an upgrade version of the RX350. It's called the RX500 F Sport, and it is truly bonkers. First of all, it's gonna pump up the power to 366 horsepower and 406 pound-feet of torque. It's also gonna add a smattering of sports-focused features like bigger brakes, adaptive variable suspension, and I had to do a double take when I saw this, rear wheel steering. Yep, what's that mean? The rear wheels will steer. So when you turn the front wheels, the rear wheels are gonna move in the opposite direction of the front wheels to decrease your turning rate radius and at high speeds the rear wheels will turn in the same direction as the front wheels to increase stability how cool is that in the interior of the rx 350h we have some great storage cubbies up here in the front i can push this little cubby forward to reveal a wireless charger and some usb-c ports and then you know on this center cubby a lot of people who have been in this car i see them reach right here at the front, no, no, no. This is no normal car where you open back like that. That is unelegant. Here in the Lexus, we open from the side, but you're saying, Jake, how's the passenger get in here if it opens from the driver's side like this? Ah, watch this, Lexus has a magic trick. Bingo, it opens from both sides. How cool is that? But you all don't just wanna hear about the cubbies, you wanna hear about real things. Like, how about the seat comfort? The seats here are pretty stiff. Uh, a lot of people have gone in this car with me who have driven around have said, yeah, the seats don't feel the most comfortable and I'm inclined to agree with them. They're not uncomfortable, but I would just expect something a little more plush from a luxury crossover. Um, now, I've just noticed recently that a lot of seats in new cars have been getting stiffer in like the last two years or so. Let me know if you're noticing that in the comments below. Uh, just something interesting I've noticed. They're certainly not uncomfortable, let me be clear about that. These seats are heated and cooled. Now, there is no physical button to turn on the heating and cooling. I can already hear the angry people that are angry that Lexus took away the buttons. They've met us in the middle here. You turn on the car and instantly the heating and cooling functions are gonna pop up on the screen. Now, the even cooler feature is this. When you turn on your heated or cooled seat, the car will remember that. So you turn your heated seat, you turn the car off, you get out of the car, you come back in, turn the car on, and the heated seat is on. This is a feature that I feel like most cars don't have. Um, a few may have it, but I have not seen this in many cars. And this is one of those features I talked about in the intro. I think this is just a really small feature that's gonna improve your quality of life. And I think that it's gonna kind of make its way through the whole automotive industry in the coming years. Really appreciate that from Lexus. In terms of the actual heat of the heated seat, it gets pretty hot. I know a lot of people complain that some cars don't get hot enough. You're not gonna have that complaint here in the RX 350h. And we do have a heated steering wheel, which is very nice. Now, before we move to the back, I just wanna point out a few other features to you up here. First of all, we have a $200 camera mirror. I would highly suggest this feature. What's it do? There's a camera at the very back of the vehicle and that's gonna replace your mirror here with a video stream from the camera, cuts out anything in the back that's blocking your view. I find it's particularly helpful during kind of dusk time. I really like that feature and would highly recommend it to anyone buying a Lexus RX 350h. Moving down here to your center area. I was trying to start the car. I was looking for a start button down here. Start button's actually up here if you're looking for it. Uh, shifter is one of those weird shifters you gotta push out and then up and down, but you'll get used to it soon enough. Then there are a few other features down here. We have a brake hold button, so you come to a stop, take your foot off the brake, the car's not gonna automatically start rolling like most automatic transmissions do. There's an EV button. Um, you know, the battery in here is not really meant to be a pure EV vehicle, but you can do, you know, short jaunts, you know, around a parking lot or whatever in EV mode. It's kind of fun to show off. 
Traction control off button. You can also reduce the traction control a little bit by putting the car into sport mode. We have a little off-road button here. Uh, and then finally, an electronic parking brake. Very few vehicles now trust you with your decision to turn the parking brake on or off. It's all tied to the transmission. When you put the car in park, it automatically turns the brake on now in many cars. But Lexus still trusts you with that decision. In the rear of the RX 350H, the same great designs and materials come back here, including the Mark Levinson sound system. The $500 panoramic roof is a must. It really lightens up this interior. I really like that feature. Another interesting feature back here, heated and cooled outboard rear seats for $680. Would you spring for that or will your passengers have improperly temperature regulated bottoms? Let me know in the comments below kids these days have it too good. We have two USB-C ports back here. There are six USB ports throughout the vehicle. Two of them are back here for your passengers. And of course, we have air vents right there. Now, pulling down your center cubby right here, you're gonna find that we have a little storage area and we actually have a really elegant little cup holder mechanism there. I really like that. And we have capacitive reading lights back here. So just swipe your finger and they turn on and off without pushing a button. How cool is that? Now I wanna talk about my favorite part of the RX 350H, and this was a huge surprise to me. It's the heads up display. Looking at the display, it's clearly large and high definition, but that is not what's special. Plenty of vehicles do that. What makes the heads up display in the RX 350H special is the way you navigate it. I've played with dozens of heads up displays and they are all essentially the same. They project some sort of information onto the windshield, and the only way to interact with that menu is maybe an arrow button, which cycles through different information menus. But here on the Lexus, you can control the HUD with these directional pads on the steering wheel, which are sensitive to your touch. So you place your finger on one of these pads and boom, you can see which button you are pressing in your heads up display the button that your finger is on is projected in the heads up display that means you can navigate the heads up display without taking your eyes off the road i think a lot of automakers are going to implement this in the future this is transformational and changes what a heads up display can do it is a very smart way of doing things now these days, widescreen is all of the rage in infotainment. And you might be saying, Jake, this doesn't look like a widescreen to me. Well, you're right. The aspect ratio of this screen is not necessarily widescreen, but this climate menu at the bottom is persistent. And that gives you this widescreen effect with your content at the top there. You can see we can fiddle around with our climate settings here, turn the fan on and off just like that. And you'll notice when we turn the fan on, we're able to see what our temperature is within the gauges. Pretty neat little feature. A lot of brands are doing that now. I think it looks nice. Let me know what you think about this. Some people do not like their climate controls built into the screen like this, but if it's a persistent menu, um, I think it will be acceptable to a lot more people. We do have a physical volume knob though, so that is still physical. There are subscription services you can get for this car. That's going to give you maps, but it's also going to give you the Hey Lexus feature, where if you prompt the car, it's going to bring up a little voice menu and allow you to control features around the car, set destinations, etc., all with your voice, which uh, is interesting. Let me know if you're going to subscribe to that feature in your RX 350H. There is Apple CarPlay here, so you can see we have that widescreen effect going on here. I think it looks great. It's wireless. But the one problem I found is it can lag sometimes. It does not feel very smooth. Like in the Volvo S60 and the, and the Volvo products, it feels like a very smooth Apple CarPlay system. Uh, this system here, it just feels like there's a bit of lag or, or, or it, to the animation at least. It just seems a little bit like it's chugging. I don't know if that's the nature of the wireless system here or something on Apple's end, um, but it is nice to know that you at least have CarPlay. Most people will just throw up the map and be done with it. Now, if I go back to the Lexus menu, there's one other area I wanna show you, and that is going to be the vehicle kind of setting. So we can change our drive mode here. Of course, you can set a custom mode where you can change each of the functions to either eco, normal, or sport. So if you want a sporty powertrain, but eco air conditioning, you can absolutely have that. If we go back to the car settings here, seat controls will allow you to fold those rear seats. Remember, we saw those are power folding. Keep on moving down. We got our drive assist. You can customize your driver assistance features here. Say you don't want proactive driving assist on, fine, turn it off just like that. That is really nice to have right there. 
and you can access those features even quicker with the quick access menu right here. Bring it up and you will see that some of the most important functions of the car or the most important settings, I should say, are available in this quick, easy to access menu. Let's close that and let's keep moving through these vehicle pages here. If we go to trip information, this is gonna be a pretty typical trip information meter. You can see I've been driving pretty, pretty fuel efficiently in this car. Continuing on to energy flow, you saw this earlier, it's gonna show where power is moving within the vehicle. Finally, we have our all wheel drive tire and tire pressure. These aren't too interesting. You know, it'll show where power is going since we have that E4 system here on this RX350. Let me know what you think of this infotainment system, especially with the climate controls down in the comments below. Let's take a look at your gauge cluster here. It is digital, as you can tell, and we do not have a tachometer. The tachometer is instead replaced with an eco charge power mode. So you can tell if you're driving efficiently, if you're really digging into that gas engine's power, or if you're charging up the car. This car does have sort of a mild regenerative braking for that hybrid system. And you'll know it's activated because when the car throws up its brake lights, two little red L's appear near the bottom of that tachometer, just like so. You can see when I put my foot on the brake, those two little red L's appear. You can customize what is in the center of that tachometer. I keep calling it a tachometer, just bear with me. I don't know what to call it. Uh, let me know what you would call it in the comments below. And that's gonna be done with these buttons here. And these are the same buttons that work with the heads up display, which makes things kind of interesting because you actually have to adjust this menu via the heads up display. So let me show you what I'm talking about. If I press this menu button right here, watch, I'm gonna press it. Nothing happens in our gauge cluster right there. That's because Let's see if it shows up here. All the action is happening on our heads up display. So that's where it's actually being pushed. And now we can choose in our heads up display, we can change what is being shown in our center area right here. And my favorite thing to show, you see we have the power right here, the same power meter we saw on the main screen. We have whatever music is playing, the G meter. This is my favorite thing. You can see how many Gs you're pulling in your Lexus RX 350H. I do wanna show you the camera system here on the RX 350H. Let me put the car into reverse and you'll see our cameras are gonna come up automatically. There is a car coming. Let's see if the rear cross traffic alert picks them up. Indeed it does. Okay, that's excellent that that feature worked. The car is letting us know it's not safe to back up, but now it is safe. This is a cool feature. Look, the car is gonna save an image of what's underneath of it and it's going to create an image and show us what's underneath the car. That is pretty cool. Now, if I go into drive, I'll get us back in our parking spot here. There's a grand caravan coming behind us, so we'll see if the car picks it up. Uh, it, seemed, it seemed to. Okay, that's actually not the main thing I wanted to show you. We're gonna put the car in park. We're gonna activate the camera and you can see inside of the vehicle. I find this view is really helpful for looking out for your dog when you're backing up, making sure Fluffy isn't behind the vehicle and you don't accidentally hit Fluffy. We can also hit this button to get an exterior 3D view. It's not like impressive, like how, what Genesis does with their drone view or what BMW does with their drone view, but it's better than nothing, I suppose. But the coolest part of the system is not any of the camera views, it's one of the settings. How many times do you watch a YouTube car review and the YouTuber says, the color of the car in the cameras doesn't match the car in real life? Oh, Oh, how tragic, watch this. Press settings, you're gonna go vehicle body color. Boom, you can have whatever color RX350 you would like on your 3D camera system. How cool is that? YouTube, uh, YouTube auto reviewers are gonna have nothing else to complain about now. Now those little red L's in the brake lights are a nice little Lexus touch. The Lexus L does appear in a few other Easter egg spots on the vehicle. Let me show them to you here. I'm gonna flip my camera around. You can see that we have the Lexus L in the headlights there. We have the same little Lexus swoosh here in our taillights. Now, of course, it's an L on this side of the taillights, but if we switch around, it's a backwards L. I don't know, Lexus never has really addressed that. And then there's one last place I have found the little Lexus L's. And that's in here on the interior. Nice little touch. Getting on the road in our Lexus RX 350H. Let me tell you, it's a really nice ride. I mean, the first thing I noticed when I got in here was, well, 
nothing. The Lexus RX defines the luxury crossover segment, and this is exactly what you would expect from a luxury crossover. Power is not overwhelming, but it's there. You know, it's not punchy per se, but it's on demand. Uh, this car just kind of does whatever you ask it to with a smile on its face. And it's really relaxing. I just kind of get in here. I forget that I'm driving. I just kind of hang out, listen to the really nice audio system in here. It's really just a joy to kind of put around here. And we'll get into some of the more special aspects of this experience in a bit, especially the handling with that E4 system. That is particularly interesting. But overall, the, if you want a TLDR for the driving experience of this car, it's like a little golden retriever. It does exactly what you ask it to with a smile on its face and you're just happy having a good time driving it. Is it just me or has the weather gotten a lot better? I think the RX 350H really is capable of brightening your day with its thoughtful little features. Speaking of brightening your day, if our content brightens your day, be sure to like and subscribe to Gas Guzzlers for more weekly automotive content. Now let's say you do want a little bit of kick in the RX 350H. Well, you put this car into sport mode and I would say it tightens everything up by about 10%, at least with the engine it does. That delay between you pressing the pedal and the engine revving up is delayed it is reduced just a tiny little bit ever so much that you still notice it right like it, it definitely tightens things up a little bit in the car makes it feel a little more sporty but the lexus rx does not break character when you turn sport mode on and that's really nice it's still an enjoyable ride so if you want to you know not you're not going to be throwing your guests heads back like you would in some other cars with these sport modes but your guests might not notice it, but you're gonna be having just that little bit of extra response and you're gonna appreciate that. Eco mode does pretty much the opposite. It tunes things down, smooths things out by about 10%. And it's also gonna do things like reduce the power of the AC system. It's gonna squeeze out those extra few MPGs for you so that you can be the MPG king or queen. Now let's talk about handling. And I, I wanna be careful when I say the word handling because that puts an image in people's minds of like slalom courses and things like that. And that's not what this car is about, um, but it does have great composure. I'll say that, I think that's the way to put it. It just handles itself really well. It's a damp, wet, rainy, awful Maryland week here. And you know what? This thing hasn't lost traction once. It hasn't had a little slip, a little it even once. It's great. Uh, you throw this thing into a roundabout. You start accelerating up a steep hill from a stop, whatever. Uh, it just maintains its composure wonderfully. And that is just a really nice feeling. So that's something that I really wanna give high praise for. And there's a few reasons that this car might have such good composure. Uh, so first of all, that E4 system is obviously doing a lot of the heavy lifting. Also, the fifth generation of the RX350, this one, its center of gravity has been lowered half an inch from the previous generation. Also, I mentioned the wheels. Lexus has pushed the wheels further out towards the corners of the car, and that's gonna also help increase with some of your stability and maneuvering in this vehicle. Overall, I gotta give high high praise for the composure and handling of this vehicle. If you're wondering about suspension comfort, it's not the cushiest ride, right? Lincoln's gonna have something a little bit softer than this, but this is also gonna give you a little more confidence when your cornering stay a little bit flatter than that uberly soft Lincoln. It's also gonna be a little more comfortable than something like a tuned up, wound up X3 or X5 or something like that. Uh, I think Lexus knows who's buying this car and they struck the chord perfectly. So this car is a hybrid, right? Well, you wouldn't really notice it unless you were looking for it. It just is very seamless with the integration of the electric motors with the gas engine. There's no clunkiness, nothing like that. And the CVT is really well done here. Lexus and Toyota have been doing this for 20 years. They know what they're doing. Now, there is a complaint with the hybrid system and that is the following. On startup, I have found that the engine can get pretty loud and it does not feel like a luxurious experience. Essentially, the revs of the engine become decoupled with from how fast you're going so you could be sitting there at a stop and the engine is going you know charging up that battery um, or or you know you're you're just getting on the start of your drive just starting to take off nice and slow and the engine's going it's not the most luxurious experience but if that's my complaint with the hybrid system, then okay. You know, a lot of people want the fuel economy of a hybrid system, but they don't wanna deal with a plug-in hybrid and remembering to plug in the car and all that. Um, just having a mild hybrid solution like the RX presents, a lot of people are gonna really like. And this energy monitor is so cool. Showing the transfer of electrons between the battery and the engine and the wheels is just awesome. And 
it helps with this acceleration. Here we go. Yeah, nothing special, like I was saying earlier. But uh, it's good enough, right? It's good enough to get you out of a situation again. That's not what this car is about. That's silly. You now join me on our patented gas guzzlers handling course, AKA uh, a random government building parking lot. So I wanted to come to this parking lot and drive in circles because I wanted to talk about the steering. I mentioned this vehicle feels kind of big to drive. At least I think I did when I filmed the intro of this vehicle or the exterior, um, but it feels kind of big to drive largely because of that hood, right? It's a very tall hood, very straight hood, and it makes it kind of difficult, I feel like, to position the car in a parking lot. Um, now, the car has plenty of cameras that will help you out with that, but it's still just kind of, you know, it, it's hard when you're doing parking sometimes to place where the corners of the vehicle are, and it does feel big. But even though it feels big, once you actually make a turn, it feels quite small. The turning radius of this vehicle is a lot smaller than I thought it was gonna be as I initiated the turn. You know, it's not like you're gonna have to go for that rear wheel steering system uh, in order to move maneuver around a parking lot, which is nice. I still can't get over the fact they have a rear wheel steering system in the 500 version of this car. As I was driving around that parking lot, I kind of noticed something. You see that parking lot belonged to my local board of education. And I was like, kind of like, oh, haha, ha, how many RX 350s are we gonna see in the parking lot of where all the PTAs and stuff meet. And uh, it was a lot, it was a lot. There were like four or five in a pretty small parking lot. Uh, and so I'm realizing this car might be suffering from success in that like, it might be too popular. When you go out and look for your car, uh, you're gonna need one of those apps or something or an air tag in here because this car is just so popular. And now I'm seeing, you know, with good reason. On the highway in our Lexus RX 350H here, this car is great for highway cruising. You can tell that Lexus really gave that a lot of thought when designing this vehicle. And that comes down to a few things. First of all, the ride is perfectly tuned for it. This, the engine does great. This powertrain does great when merging onto highways. And then finally, you have your heads up display, your magical heads up display, which makes it so easy to enable the adaptive cruise control in other cars, you have to take your eyes off the road, you have to fidget down here, you have to look at, at the steering wheel, not the road when activating your dri self-driving features, autonomous, semi-autonomous driving, whatever. You know what I mean. You gotta look down here, it's dangerous. Not in the Lexus RX, because of that amazing heads-up display system, you just rub your thumb over and it's very easy to turn on the adaptive cruise functions here. And once it's on, it keeps you centered in the lane very, very well. You do have to keep your hands on the wheel and the vehicle is watching you with an IR sensor bar right here. Um, and that's just gonna make sure that you're still paying attention, you're not falling asleep, anything like that. I have found it to be unintrusive. Uh, I, some people online I saw reported that they found it to be very intrusive. So maybe that was on an older software version or something like that, um, TBD. But for me, this week that I've had the car, it has not interrupted me once. The car does a very good job of smoothing out the distance between it and the car in front of it when it's using that radar cruise control. And your blind spot monitor works wonderfully. I mean, it's blind spot monitor. What more could you ask for? I have found that the uh, the cross traffic alert can be a little overly sensitive, especially on the front. If you're just coming and you're making a left hand turn, even if the car is not very close, that, that system's gonna be beeping and going off. Uh, I find it to be a bit much, but I suppose it's easy to turn off and some people may really like that sensitivity. That's gonna be right a preference thing. Overall, highway cruising, Lexus nailed it with this vehicle. Again, they really know their demographic when they made the RX 350H. They've been making this car a long time and uh, they have this formula refined. You know, the more I drive the RX, I just kind of realize like, you don't get as mad at bad drivers. Like, because everyone on the road is a bad driver except for you, right? If you're like me, you know that you are the only good driver on the road and everyone else is dangerous and gonna cause an accident. And it, when someone honks or cuts you off or whatever, um, you just don't care as much when you're driving the RX. You just say, I'll get there, I'll get there. And some final driving thoughts. It doesn't feel like you're driving when you're in here. I just feel like I'm going from point A to point B but I'm not having to put effort. The car just kind of does it. It makes it easy to drive. It makes it easy to relax in here. And it's not a driver's car and that is great. It just makes the drive 
easy peasy lemon squeezy. And if you live in a wet or cold climate, I would recommend this car for its kind of stability and traction alone. I mean, it's just been doing a great job. Uh, and hey, you got the roof rack so you can throw the skis on there, go for a little ski trip. Final driving impressions very positive. As you can probably tell, I've really enjoyed my time with the RX 350H. This car just makes sense and it makes lots of small little quality of life updates to the automobile that are well past due. Things like those adjustable height cup holders just make a big difference, but they're a really small feature that take a lot of thought to implement. Anyone can toss the biggest screen into their car. Not everyone can come up with neat little changes like those cup holders or like that heads up display, which means that you you don't ever have to take your eyes off the road. I really like these small little things that Lexus is putting forward and this RX 350H is chock full of them. There is a catch though. $66,000 is a hefty price to pay for a two row SUV, but that's just the age we live in now. $60,000 used to be three row territory easily, but that's just not the case anymore with how much technology and features are packed into these vehicles. I see this car being perfect for parents whose families have kind of moved out, right? The kids have gone off to college, the minivan's done, there's no need for the Sienna anymore. This makes a lot of sense to upgrade to. You know, occasionally if you wanna go on a trip with the kids, pick them up from college or whatever, this will be able to do that. It's got tech that's easy to understand, but it's also got all of those wonderful non-technological quality of life updates, and those people are a bit more likely to be able to afford 60, a $66,000 car compared to their kids who are in college. So those kids might be looking at a RAV4 when they're thinking about a two-row SUV. But that's kind of my concluding thoughts on the RX 350H. I like this car a lot more than I thought I would. Um, and I just hope I get to cross paths again with it soon. It just was really relaxing to drive and it was a really good time. Uh, so keep an eye out. We have more Lexus content soon. We're gonna have a special get together with Lexus and check out one of their new vehicles. So keep an eye and make sure to subscribe for that.